All right, this is the time of night you've all been waiting for for our featured act. Uh, as I said, he's been on the Johnny Carson Show 88 times. We have the legendary mentalist. Let's give a late night welcome for the amazing Kreskin. <laughs> there he is. How are you? You're gonna wire me right now. You know, I, I gotta, I, I'm, I'm, I gotta say something because listen that you, you talked to Gary, it, it brought back a flood of memories because you both have the philosophy which a lot of people in show business don't have today that you've got to give something back of, of your success mm -hmm. and so forth because I've it's it, it there's a motion picture that's almost been completed as far as being written on my life story because uh, <coughs> what people don't know is I've been involved in the 88 crime cases wow. helping the police solve and so forth but I want to tell you something and it made me when Gary was talking it made me think of it and Bob Hope said to me he said in all the years in this business or in this business you give him the most honest answer of succeeding in the business. I'm going to quote, he says, you tell the story. When I see these people at colleges, and I've gone over a thousand colleges in this country in Canada, and they have a meet and greet after a lot of people want to get in the movies, they want to get in television, they want to get and, and so forth. And I'll say, well, if you have talent, and you have a great deal of talent, and forget about the damn minimum wage, because there's no minimum wage in show business. You may have to work for nothing. And if you can prove yourself, sure. and you can take advantage of every opportunity you have, and if you have a great deal of luck, luck and all these things fit into place, then you have a minuscule chance of ever making it in show business. Mm -hmm. And Hope says, you have told the truth, and the real person who wants to be in the business, that wouldn't bother them for a moment. They go the rest of their life, and you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. A minuscule chance. That's the honesty about the business. Uh -huh. So I, ju I just, I just, I just lo love to hear you guys talk about it because, and by the way, folks, the two of them here, I dare not read both their thoughts at the same time on camera. We would be, we would be in trouble. Well, here's one thought. How that? many cal how many colleges did you go to? Over thousand. A thousand, over a thousand. Well, no, he, he did seven. College super, not that oh, no. <laughs> performing. Oh, well, that's not that super. <laughs> But, but you know, yeah, I got to. I, I got to uh, tell you something. I uh, only went to Sleepaway College. I didn't go <laughs> long. I got to tell you. Uh, <laughs> No, no, oh, no. When, uh, that was funny. <laughs> when Tom, when Tom Hanks, I, I got it, and I'm not a movie maker, but Tom Hanks made the movie The Great Buck Howard, and you folks can watch it on, on the internet and what have you, because uh, it, it was written by one of my road managers, John Malkovich, plays me in the movie. So Hanks, opening night, because the, uh, it, it, I'm the character in the, in the whole story, and uh, Hanks at the end said, I want you to make certain that this statement is heard at the end. So when you watch the movie, the, it's a full length story, love story and all that jazz crazy stuff. Not my love's life, but so, so forth. At the end, you hear the voice say, the Kreskin's never been shown to have, use electronic devices or secret assistance in any part of his program. So opening night on Broadway, <coughs> when we're going down the red carpet, I get to the end and Hanks hugs me and says, thanks for letting my son play, play you and John Malkovich. And I, and I, he, I said he did a great job. And Hank says, I want to tell you the good and the bad side about making this movie. And this is, the public can't hear because it's, a, a, I know, hundreds of people and we're going to go in when this movie's going to start. And I said, what did you say? He says, I'll tell you the good and the bad part about making the movie. I said, okay, okay Tom, because Tom's one of the nicest people you could ever meet in the business. He said, understand that Malkovich watched all your television appearances, days and days, every motion to get your emotions in view and so forth and the movement. I said, yeah. He says, you want to know the bad side? I said, yeah. He says, for three days, he shook hands with each of us for five minutes like this, and we were going around needing a chiropractor. He wanted, he wanted to get the handshake down. And in the movie, that's all he's doing is shaking hands all over the place. Well, the first time he did that to me, the chiller, I wasn't even expecting him to put my arm out of his socket. I, I go, <laughs> if this guy was 30 years younger, I would have But that's the way out. I am. That's my day. That's my <laughs> I was like this. Yeah. I had to put on icy hot when I went home for like two days. <laughs> but the, the one thing, <laughs> the one you mentioned Carson and so forth. Yeah, I want to hear some more stories came, about Carson. It just came out just a, a few days ago. I never said it, and I didn't do it. Nobody's going to say I did it. But uh, Johnny Carson had a, a tremendous philosophy, which he uh, never allowed his guests to be in his uh, dress room. He didn't, and he didn't see them before the program. See, that's because, the best way to do it. Because some of the best remarks come spontaneously, and they'll say, gee, you've got to say that later on. It never comes later on the same way. Never.
Carson never allowed anyone before it except two people, Orson Welles and yours truly. Oh, yeah? Really? And the reason it was yours truly, because I did something with Carson, which NBC banned me from doing. No way. They called me on the phone. I was traveling, and they said, uh, uh, Kreskin, you're on next Monday, whatever it is, and you're going to do such and such with John, does such and such. I said, yes. They said, you're not to do this. this is, I'm, we're one of the heads of N NBC. You're not to. I said, okay, because you don't argue with them or the Pope or anybody else, the press. So anyway, so uh, two days before, I get a call from his secretary, and she says, Kreskin, she, she was, used to confide in me a lot. She says, you're going to get a call from Johnny. He's going to be using a lot of heavy language. I said, no, I, I know him well enough. And she said, but he has a reason for calling you. When can he call you? Tomorrow night. I said, well, I'm finished at the college late at night at, at, two and, at 10 o'clock. That's three hours. That's no problem. So I get a call at 11 o'clock, and it's Johnny. And Johnny says, uh, you're on Monday or so forth? I said, yeah. He said, uh, NBC called you and told you not to do so. I said, yeah. He had some descriptions of NBC, which are four-letter words that are not in popular. You are very familiar with them. <laughs> and he said, uh, <laughs> no. he said, he says, listen to me, Christian. We're going to do it. Now I get to the studio. Now I'm in his dressing room, and I had to condition him mentally because this was a dangerous test. Now I go back, now I'm on the air, and Carson says, Kreskin is going to do something with me. And there were two men sitting next to Fred de Cordova. He's the producer of the show. And we, I stand up, and Carson nods and does this to me. He's telling me they're NBC officials. I said, John, listen to my voice. I start counting. His eyes close. I said, Ed, catch me if he falls. And Ed says, what the hell did you just say? I said, Cat he said, of course I will. Uh, Carson's eyes closed. He starts falling over. They catch him. I said, bring two chairs over because we did not rehearse. We put his head on one chair, his feet on the other. No magic trick, no illusion. And a gal on the show, I said, come over. She says, no. I said, I want you to come over. She says, no, I, won't. I can't. So Ed McMahon says, what's the matter? Come over. I had dinner with her a few months later. She says, I thought I'd never be asked on again. She comes over. I sit, sit on the middle of him. She looks at me and says, are you out of your goddamn mind? So she sat, lifted her legs up, no trickery, and there she's sitting on him. When it was all over, and we took her off, and I lifted Carson. Ken, he said, I would have sworn it was a baby. I had conditioned him through the power of suggestion, and that's what NBC didn't want me to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and John, Jimmy Fallon, go on my webpage, theamazingkreskin.com. Fallon said to me, you did the show before he went to L.A. here. Did you do, where did you do that? I said, right in that place there. He says, the next time you're on, I did it with Jimmy Fallon between two chairs, but no one sat on him. I stood on him. Really? Stood on him. That's sick. We want to show the audience and uh, show... What I do for a living. I want you to show what Can you I do, do for a living. Something yeah. All right. I've never done this on television. You got to do something cool, bud. Put me to sleep and get a girl to sit on me. <laughs> <laughs> folks, I can wait, get wait, away wait. with that well, at folks, home because I folks, say, folks, I wait, wait, wait. sleeping. I didn't know. Folks, 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 did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> folks, did you, did you hear what he just asked me to do? <laughs> Forgive me, Father. I said, no, I'm an idiot. Uh, okay. This is never... Girl. Carson, uh, Carson, for on eight appearances during breaks, pulled me by the shoulders you want me to stand chair up and out? No, wait. He dragged me under the seat, and I had to do something with him that the full viewers never saw. X-rated? No, no. No, it had to do with the fact he could not believe this is possible. I want you to pick someone from the audience whom I, I don't know. Maybe uh, you don't have to play cards, but maybe you just play, maybe play goldfish as a kid or someone. Any some, volunteers uh, out there? One of, one of my yeah, past yeah. late night guests. Yeah, come on. Domini? Yeah, good. What's up, baby? Uh, Hi, yeah, you can't be holding the microphone in your hand. Okay, so uh, where do I All right, what, what's your first name? Domini. Jo Johnny, I want you to face, sit, sit in the face of the table. I want you to do that. I want you to close your eyes, and I, I got to do this legitimately because I did it with Carson, and he just flipped out. These are shuffle playing cards. Generally, I'm going to hold the deck behind the chair, okay. and I'm going to riffle like that. Okay. I'm not going to spread the cards. I'm just going to riffle like that. Okay. You say stop anytime you want. Let me move. Okay. Just Am I as I riffle. Look at them? Uh, just what? Say stop whenever you want. Okay. Stop. All right. Uh, listen, I don't want to see the card. Just take it off the deck. Take it off. But keep it face down. Don't look at it. You haven't looked at it? Nope. John, you can open your eyes. John, you can open your eyes. You took a card out where you stopped me, and you, you haven't seen the card. No. All right. Oh my God, this. I, Carson was fascinated that I could influence people's responses and thinking without speaking to them, by just by mental concentration and what have you.
Johnny, nobody talked to you about this before the show. You haven't shown me the card. This is another deck of cards. I guess they messed this up when they Those handled it. Those are the ones it. that you took from my house. Sir. I think it was another <laughs> way to put <laughs> John, the, the, the thing to realize, it's a regular deck of cards. They're all different, what have you. Here's what you're going to... Oh, there's a joke. No, there's a... Johnny, what you're going to do is this. You're going to take the cards in your hand. Now, let me just make sure that the jokers are out of here because if they're not, not out of here... Like can, can, can a camera see that these cards are all different? Is that clear in every way, shape, or form? John, here's what you're going to do. You're going to deal cards on the table face up one at a time, one on top of the other. Now, would you look at your, the card you chose and put your hand on my shoulder when you see the card, but don't tell us what it is. Okay. Have you looked at it? Yes, I have. Johnny, <coughs> let me spread these here. I need to see all these cards, every single one of them. What's your first name, ma'am? Domini. Think of the card. Johnny, hold them in your hand as if you're going to deal. Take your hand off my shoulder. I believe I know exactly the card you chose. You haven't talked to me or anything else. And I know exactly where it is in that deck. Johnny, one at a time. Don't do it yet. Deal cards face up, but deal, hold the deck uh, and deal them in a pile. Somewhere along the line, when you feel a hunch, stop and deal a card face down. Don't show it to if us. If I keep feel a down. hunch? Yeah, just keep going. One on top of the other. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let him decide when he deals it face down. I, I, don't say, as soon as you feel a hunch, do it. I mean, don't, 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 don't play games. It, just, it'll, just when you feel like inclined, just do it. I think this. But keep it down. Keep it down. Okay. Keep it down. Down? Down. Deal the, the, the rest of the cards face up. You, can, you know the card, your card. Look for it. She sees every... Keep the deck de tilted forward so they can see it, the audience can see it. We should have rehearsed. Show. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay. Tell me honestly... Keep on as it goes through. Tell me honestly. You saw every single card in the deck... And you know the card you thought of. Did you see your card? You no, did, not, did see not. Card. not see your card. You did not turn her card face up. You have not told it to us. And you put one card reversed in the deck. What's the name of the card that you uh, put in the deck? Tell us. Six of hearts. Let's turn over and see what, what you did. You turned one card over. And... Wow, shit. Literally, that's the card. That's the one card. It's the only one. She literally stopped at that card. That was legit. And that was legit. Anytime you'd like to have a game of cards later on, we'll have a game of poker. Oh, a thousand percent. Uh, by the way, in Aruba, in Aruba, I, uh, I, I was, I'm not allowed to play in any casino in the Western world. Oh, that's great. And, and one <laughs> close, closing night, I said to my road manager, I was there for a, a three weeks, I'm going to go to play a black, black. He says, you can't play? I said, they don't know me here. They know me from England, the people from England, Canada, and what have you. So I went to a casino, I put down $37. It's on my webpage, amazingcreskin.com. My road manager was there. When I finished playing, I went to the hotel room. It was 3.30. We had to get a plane out, and they helped me pack the $100 bills in my pocket. I started with $37 and won $22,400 in wow. two and a half hours. That's great. That's so. great. Can, I be, can I be honest with you folks? Right now, I'm just not getting that much. No, I'm only kidding you. <laughs> well, Creskin. I've heard that before. <laughs> Listen, it was my pleasure. Look at this. Pleasure. I'm holding it down. <laughs> oh, this, that's our time. We're the already time over we're 10 right. minutes. Time. We went over Gary time. Pastor, guys, sit down. To this. Next time I come on, I will show you how I can, we'll take a half dozen or so people from the audience, how I can control them by just thinking, and they will end up being paralyzed, unable to move and speak and talk for a, almost 15 minutes. Can, can I, I do that to my wife? Can I do that to you? <laughs> All right, guys, the amazing Christian oh. Gary Pastor. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs>